The house was buzzing with excitement, every corner decked out in festive lights and the air filled with the scent of pine and holiday spices. My family's annual Christmas bash was the highlight of the season, and this year was no exception. As guests poured in, the warmth of reunion filled the grand living room. Grace, darling, look who's here, my dad called out, his voice booming over the chatter. I turned from the group I was chatting with, a glass of punch in hand. Walking towards him, I saw he was standing with Mr. Anderson, his oldest friend, and beside him, a guy I hadn't seen in years, Alex Anderson. My heart skipped a beat, memories of childhood crushes flooding back. Hey, Grace, Alex said with a casual grin, extending his hand. He had that rugged look about him, grown more handsome with the years. Alex, wow, you've changed. I managed, shaking his hand, feeling the old butterfly stirring. Dad chuckled, nudging Mr. Anderson. Remember how these two used to chase each other around? Grace had quite the crush on you, Alex. I felt my cheeks burning. Dad, I protested, wishing the ground would swallow me up. Alex laughed, a deep, easy sound. Well, look at you now, all grown up. The evening went on, with everyone mingling and enjoying the festive atmosphere. Dad and Mr. Anderson seemed particularly pleased, watching as Alex and I caught up. It felt like we were the evening's unofficial entertainment. You still into that horse riding thing? Alex asked, leaning against the mantel, a drink in hand. Yeah, though not as much as I used to be. Work keeps me busy, I replied, feeling more at ease as we talked. And you? Still the wild heart, traveling everywhere? Some things never change, he winked. But hey, let's not talk about me. What's this I hear about you working for a charity? That's pretty cool. The conversation flowed naturally from there, the years of absence melting away as we shared stories and laughs. My dad and Mr. Anderson watched from across the room, their looks exchanged filled with something like satisfaction. As the night wound down, guests started to leave, their goodbyes filled with holiday wishes and promises to meet again soon. Alex stayed back, helping us clear up the remnants of the party. You know, I really enjoyed tonight. It's been great catching up with you, Grace, Alex said, stacking chairs. Yeah, me too. It was a nice surprise seeing you again, I admitted, feeling a twinge of sadness at the thought of the evening ending. Just then, Dad came over, clapping Alex on the back. Why don't you two exchange numbers? You know, keep in touch. There was a moment of awkward silence before we both agreed, and numbers were exchanged under the watchful eyes of our fathers. The next morning, my curiosity got the better of me, and I sent Alex a casual text. To my surprise, he replied almost immediately, suggesting we meet for coffee. And just like that, our new chapter began. After the Christmas reunion, things between Alex and me picked up speed, fast. It wasn't long before our casual coffee meetups turned into late-night talks, dinner dates, and weekends spent exploring the city together. One chilly afternoon, nearly a month after our reconnection, Dad called me into his study. The room was his sanctuary, lined with bookshelves, a hefty desk, dominating the space. He was seated, looking more serious than usual. Grace, sit down. We need to talk, he said, gesturing to the chair across from him. I sat, a flutter of unease in my stomach. What's up, Dad? He took a deep breath, his demeanor unusually solemn. How do you feel about Alex? I blinked, surprised by the question. Alex? I like him. A lot, actually. We've been having a great time together. Dad nodded, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. I thought as much. Mr. Anderson and I have been talking, you know, about you and Alex. My heart skipped a beat. Talking? About what, exactly? About the two of you. Together. Permanently. My mind raced. You mean marriage? Yes, marriage. Dad confirmed, watching my reaction closely. We think it's a good idea. Brings the families closer, you know? And you two seem perfect for each other. I was taken aback. 
Dad, don't you think it's a bit, old-fashioned? Arranging things like this? He laughed, a hearty sound. No arrangements, darling. Just two old friends hoping for their kids' happiness. But it's up to you and Alex, of course. We just think it's a good match. The conversation stayed with me, nagging at the back of my mind as I met Alex for dinner that night. The restaurant was cozy, an intimate setting that felt worlds away from my father's study. Alex seemed more nervous than usual, fidgeting with his napkin and avoiding eye contact. It was unlike him, and it only added to the knot of anxiety in my stomach. Grace, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about, Alex finally said, his voice steady, but serious. I took a sip of my water, bracing myself. Yeah? What's up? He took a deep breath. Our parents have been talking, you know. About us. I nodded, my heart racing. Yeah, Dad mentioned it. And, how do you feel about it? He asked, his eyes searching mine for an answer. I paused, choosing my words carefully. I think it's a bit sudden. But, honestly, I like you, Alex. A lot. And I think, I think we could be really good together. A smile broke across his face, a mixture of relief and happiness. I'm glad you said that, because I feel the same way. I was worried you'd think it was all too arranged, too quick. It is quick, I admitted, but it doesn't mean it's not right. I mean, we do have a say in this, right? We're not just going along with what our parents want. Absolutely, Alex agreed. It's our lives, our choice. And I choose you, Grace. I want to be with you, marriage and all. Hearing him say those words, so earnest and sure, melted away any doubts I had. I choose you too, Alex. Before our fairy tale wedding, Alex and I sat down with a bunch of legal papers sprawled across the dining table. Among the usual documents was the prenuptial agreement. It was a hefty document, detailing what belonged to whom if things went south but what really caught my eye was the clause on infidelity. The deal was clear, if one of us cheated, the innocent party could call it quits and walk away with $5 million. At first, I couldn't hide my surprise. Five million? Really, Alex? That's, specific, I said, eyebrows raised, trying to make light of the hefty figure staring back at me from the page. Alex met my gaze, his expression serious. I know it sounds harsh, Grace, but it's just a precaution. Not that I'd ever give you reason to use it, he assured me, taking my hand across the table. I laughed, a bit uneasy, but trusting him completely. I guess it's fair. Not planning on needing it, are you? I teased back, trying to shake off the tension. Never, he replied, squeezing my hand. And with that, we signed the agreement, sealing our futures together with ink and a kiss. The wedding was nothing short of magnificent, the kind of celebration kids dream about. Every moment was perfect, from saying I do to dancing the night away under the stars. The honeymoon was a blur of bliss, every day happier than the last. I was over the moon, married to my childhood crush, living out my dream. But after the honeymoon glow faded, things took a turn. The warmth and closeness between me and Alex cooled off faster than I could have imagined. It wasn't long before we were living more like roommates than soulmates. One night, after Alex had been particularly distant, I decided enough was enough. We need to talk, I said as he walked in, late again, looking like he'd rather be anywhere but here. Now? Grace, I'm beat, he replied, not even bothering to hide his frustration. Yeah, now because you're never here, Alex. And when you are, it's like you're not. What's going on with us? I pushed, my voice a mix of hurt and anger. Alex sighed, a look of weariness washing over him. Work's a nightmare. You know this. What do you want me to do? I want you to be here, with me. I want my husband back. Not this, ghost who shares my house, I said, my voice cracking. Alex looked at me, his eyes clouded with something like hesitation. I don't know what to say, Grace. I just, 
need some space right now. Space? Is that code for something else? Are you? I couldn't even finish the sentence, the thought of him was someone else twisting my gut. No, God, no, Grace. It's not like that. He said quickly, but his quick denial only reinforced my suspicions. In a bid to put my restlessness to bed and the incessant suspicions about Alex's loyalty to rest, I found myself dialing up a private detective. It felt like something out of a noir film, yet there I was, hoping to unearth any hint of infidelity that Alex had artfully concealed. Despite the detective's thorough digging, his report came back clean as a whistle. Mrs. Your husband's good at covering his tracks, if there's anything to cover at all, he had said, his voice a mix of professionalism and sympathy. I hung up the phone, feeling a mix of relief and confusion. Was I just imagining things? In the midst of trying to navigate my rocky marriage, life threw me an unexpected curveball. It happened one mundane Tuesday at the charity fund where I work, helping sick kids find a little joy amidst their struggles. That's when he walked in, let's call him Ryan. Ryan was the kind of guy who seemed to have stepped right out of a movie, charming, with a smile that could light up the darkest days. Is this where I can drop off these donations? Ryan asked, his voice smooth as he approached my desk, carrying a box filled with new toys and books. Yeah, right here is fine. Thanks so much. The kids will love these, I replied, offering him a smile, trying not to get too caught up in his good looks or the way his presence seemed to suddenly make the room a bit brighter. Anything to help. I've been looking for a place to contribute regularly. Seems like you guys do great work he said, his eyes locking with mine, an earnest look in them. That's really generous of you. We always need more support, I said, feeling a warmth in my chest at his genuine interest. Ryan started showing up more frequently, dropping off donations, asking about the charity, and even volunteering his time. It wasn't long before our casual exchanges at the charity turned into coffee runs, and then to lunches. Ryan was easy to talk to, funny, and had this way of making me feel like I was the only person in the room. One lunch turned particularly personal. Grace, you seem a bit off today. Everything okay? Ryan asked, his tone laced with concern, as we sat in the corner of a cozy cafe. I hesitated, not sure how much I wanted to share. It's just, home stuff. You know how it is. Ryan leaned in, his eyes sincere. I might not know exactly what you're going through, but I'm here if you need to talk. Sometimes, a fresh pair of ears can help. His words, so simple and kind, broke through my walls. I found myself opening up about the distance between Alex and me, the silence that filled our home, and the loneliness that seemed to engulf me. Sounds like you're carrying a heavy load, Grace. You don't have to go through it alone. Ryan said, reaching across the table to offer a comforting squeeze on my hand. His gesture, meant to comfort, sparked a mix of emotions in me. Guilt, for enjoying the company of another man. Relief, for finally being heard. Confusion, about what this all meant. Ryan must have sensed my internal turmoil. Hey, no pressure, okay? I'm just glad to be someone you can talk to. And who knows? Maybe things with Alex will turn around. I nodded, managing a small smile. Thanks, Ryan. I hope so too. The arrival of Ryan at the charity, as I've mentioned, brought a peculiar kind of solace I didn't know I needed. However, his perfect timing and the seamless way he fit into the void Alex left started ringing alarm bells in my mind. Was it just coincidence, or was there more to Ryan than met the eye? On a whim, I called the detective again. There's someone I need you to check out for me, I said, my voice steady, but my heart racing. The idea felt ludicrous, but I needed to know. The detective's findings hit me like a freight train. Ryan, with his perfect smile and comforting presence, was nothing but a pawn in a game orchestrated by Alex. He was an actor, hired to play the role of the perfect suitor, a trap set to catch me in the act of infidelity, thereby granting Alex a way out of our marriage and a hefty sum to boot. It was time to flip the script on Alex and his deceitful game. I called Ryan, my voice steady, 
hiding the turmoil inside. Ryan, can we meet? I feel like we've really connected, and I... I want to see where this could go, I said, laying the bait. Sure, Grace, I've felt the same way. How about dinner at your place? He replied, his tone eager, unaware of the trap I was setting. That sounds perfect. See you tomorrow night? Can't wait, he said, and we ended the call. The next day, I briefed the private detective on the plan. He'd be waiting outside, ready to come in when I gave the signal. Everything was set. As the hours ticked down to Ryan's arrival, my nerves tightened, but I was ready. Ryan arrived looking every bit the part of the charming suitor, a bottle of wine in hand. Grace, you look beautiful, he greeted, leaning in for a cheek kiss that I awkwardly dodged. Thanks, Ryan. Come in. Dinner's almost ready, I said, leading him to the dining table. We made small talk as we ate, but my mind was racing, waiting for the right moment to confront him. Finally, as we moved to the living room with our drinks, I decided it was time. Ryan, there's something I need to ask you, I started, my voice firm. The truth, why are you really here? He looked taken aback, a flicker of panic in his eyes, before he masked it with confusion. What do you mean? I'm here because I like you, Grace. Isn't it obvious? I shook my head, a bitter laugh escaping me. Cut the crap, Ryan. I know about Alex. I know he hired you. For a moment, Ryan's facade cracked, and then he sighed, resigning. Grace, I... I didn't expect to actually like you. This started as a job, yes, but... But what? You thought you'd play the good guy and make it all okay? I interrupted, my anger rising. You were part of his plan to ruin my life. Grace, please. Let me explain. He started, but I wasn't having any of it. No, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to help me set things right. You're going to work for me now. I declared, the detective stepping into the room at my signal, badge in hand. Ryan paled at the sight of him. Grace, I... I'm sorry. I didn't know how deep this went. What do you want me to do? You're going to give Alex exactly what he wanted. Evidence of an affair that never happened. We'll take some photos, create some fake messages. And then, you're going to disappear. I laid out the plan, the detective nodding in agreement. And if I don't? Ryan challenged, though the fear in his eyes was evident. Then I pressed charges for fraud and conspiracy. Your choice, I said coldly, the detective moving closer to emphasize the point. Ryan swallowed hard, looking from me to the detective and back. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do what you say. The next hour was a blur of staged photos and concocted messages the detective overseeing everything to ensure it looked convincing. As Ryan left, a part of me felt sorry for him, caught up in a game far bigger than he'd anticipated. But mostly, I felt a steely resolve. I watched Alex from across the dinner table, his smile too wide, too pleased. It was clear he believed he had the upper hand, having received the staged photos of me and Ryan. His glee was palpable, and it sickened me. Just as I was processing this, my phone buzzed discreetly in my pocket. A text from the detective confirmed my worst fears, Alex had been caught red-handed, not just playing the faithful husband as he'd led everyone to believe. A few tension-filled days later, a family dinner set the stage for what felt like the final act of our twisted drama. Both our families gathered, sharing stories and laughter, unaware of the storm brewing under the surface. Midway through the meal, with a smirk that made my stomach churn, Alex stood, glass in hand, calling for attention. I have something to say, he announced, his voice oozing false sincerity. It's about Grace. The room fell silent, all eyes on him, then shifting to me. I clenched my fists under the table, bracing myself. I've discovered something unfortunate. Grace has been unfaithful, he declared, pulling out the photos of me and Ryan, his smile widening as he watched the shock ripple through the room. Gasps and murmurs filled the air, my parents' and in-laws' faces turning from confusion to disappointment as they looked at me. 
The betrayal felt like a physical blow, not from Alex, but from the pain reflected in their eyes. But I wasn't going to let him win this easily. I stood up, my legs shaky, but my voice surprisingly steady. You think you've got it all figured out, don't you, Alex? I said, my gaze locked on his, seeing the triumph in his eyes falter. Grace, what is this? My mom asked, her voice tight with worry. Alex has been playing a game. I started. But he didn't expect me to play back. The room was dead silent now, every pair of eyes fixed on me, waiting for my next move. As the tension in the room reached its peak, I knew it was time to lay everything on the table, literally and figuratively. Before anyone jumps to any conclusions, I started, my voice steady, there's something you all need to hear. I turned on the recording of the actor's confession, his voice filling the room, admitting the photos were staged, and revealing Alex's scheme to entrap me. The room was silent, processing the weight of his words. As the recording ended, a collective sigh of relief passed through our families. My parents and Alex's looked at each other, the unspoken tension dissipating slightly with the truth out in the open. But why would Alex do that? Someone from Alex's side of the family asked, disbelief clear in their voice. To trap me, I said, to paint me as the unfaithful one. But here's the thing, Alex has been the one cheating. And I have proof. I connected my phone to the living room TV, displaying the photos and videos of Alex with another woman. The evidence was damning, leaving no room for doubt or denial. His parents, once composed, now showed their fury. Alex, how could you? His mother exclaimed, disbelief and anger interwoven in her voice. Why would you do something so despicable? Under the weight of his parents' stares and the undeniable evidence, Alex's resolve crumbled. I, I was in debt, he admitted, his voice a mere whisper. Big time. Lost a lot of money playing cards. I thought. I thought marrying Grace and five million dollars in compensation for infidelity would solve my problems. His confession was a cold comfort, the damage irreparable. His parents were livid, their expressions a mix of shock and shame. So, you used me. You lied and manipulated everyone here, just to cover your own mistakes, I said, the reality of his deceit settling in. Alex's father stood up, his disappointment palpable. We're deeply sorry, Grace. You don't deserve any of this. Alex, we're going to deal with this as a family, but know this, you've lost more than just money. Turning to Alex, I found my voice again. This marriage is over, Alex. I'll see you in court. After the dust settled from my divorce from Alex, the reality of my new life began to take shape. The $5 million I received as compensation felt like a heavy burden rather than a windfall. Knowing the source of the money tainted its value for me. However, I found solace and purpose in redirecting most of that fortune to the charity. Alex, on the other hand, wasn't faring well. Word of his actions had spread, tarnishing his reputation beyond repair. His parents, once supportive pillars in his life, had no choice but to cut professional ties, leaving him adrift in a sea of his own making. Job opportunities dried up, and creditors became his most persistent companions. Meanwhile, I embarked on a journey that took me across the country with our charity project. It was invigorating, each new city a chance to touch more lives, to make a tangible difference. The work was fulfilling, aligning perfectly with the sense of purpose that had eluded me for so long. One evening, during a rare quiet moment at home, my dad came over. The weight of unspoken words hung heavily between us until he finally broke the silence. Grace, I, I need to say I'm sorry, he began, his voice thick with emotion. Forcing Alex on you, I never imagined. I raised a hand, stopping him mid-sentence. Dad, you don't need to apologize. You couldn't have known what would happen. We all learned from this, didn't we? He nodded, relief visible in his eyes, but the guilt still lingered. I just wanted you to be happy, safe. I thought I was doing the right thing. And I found my happiness, just not in the way any of us expected. I said, offering him a reassuring smile. 
What happened with Alex, it was a tough lesson, but it led me here. To doing something I love, something that makes a difference. Dad looked at me then, really looked at me, and I could see the pride shining in his eyes. You really have found your place, haven't you? He said, a note of admiration in his voice. Yeah, I think I have, I replied, feeling a deep sense of contentment. And the charity work, it's just the beginning. There's so much more I want to do, so many more lives we can touch. Life had thrown me a curveball, but I'd caught it and thrown it right back. This was my new beginning, and I was determined to make the most of it, one step, one city, one heart at a time.